Hello and welcome to One North Main Brockton's Magazine Show where we profile people, places and events that make this city, our city, great. Today, it's pure, it's simple, it's brilliant. It is the Baywib Construction Career Day here at the Brockton Fairgrounds. We have a host of students from different schools in the greater Brockton area, including Brockton High School. And they will be going to different stations to learn about some construction career opportunities. We've covered this event before. It's awesome. It's hands-on. It's fun. And it's ed educational as well. So I want you to sit back, get those hard hats on, relax, and see what your community, the City of Champions, has to offer. This is one of the more organized events uh, that we cover on an annual basis, no doubt about it. Uh, kids were given, students were given hard hats, uh, safety vests, and uh, bags that have some Baywood paraphernalia in there, as well as some other information on construction opportunities. And they are up in stands right now, uh, the stands at the fairgrounds. And I'm looking up, up that way and see we have, geez, we have about a good 70, 75 people here today. And this is a fast and furious event, so try to keep up. I'm going to try to keep up with them. You try to keep up with me. Good luck. Good morning, we're having a great day today. Today is our second annual construction career day and it's going to be fabulous. Sun shining, our vendors are here. We've got Avon High, Stoughton High, South Shore. We've got a lot of different kids coming in and now we're looking to have uh, Brockton High kids. They're gonna be starting to come in. We'll be giving them their packets. They'll each have a hard hat, they'll have a vest. Some information about careers in the construction industry and that's what today's all about. Helping them learn about different types of careers, giving them new opportunities, some hands-on stuff, speaking to the pros, the experts here. It's gonna be a very exciting day. Holy Toledo. Man, I was mistaken on the amount of students that have arriving today or are going to be participating in Construction Career Day. Uh, behind me, we have a host of Brockton High School students. It's just a wave. So we're talking about 150 students, maybe even more, uh, from surrounding towns. And this is incredible. It's impressive. And I'm excited. Holy cow. Look at the amount of students here from South... Where, where are you guys from? South Shore Vogue Tech. South Shore Vogue Tech. Wow. There's got to be at least 60 people. Anybody have an idea how many of you are, are here? With 40, 50? I'm going to say 60. Anybody go for 65? 65. Do I hear 65? Do I hear 70? 70, 70, 70 once, 70 twice? Okay, 65 it is. 65 from South Shore. 62 and a half. All right, who's the half? Who's the half? You are? I'm Tom Bodio, and I'm from South Shore Vortec. I'm one of the uh, carpentry instructors in the program. And today we have uh, freshman and junior carpenters here. And we also have electrician, junior and freshman electricians here. And the reason that we're here is to hear other voices of what we do in the industry, meet some of the vendors, and uh, get their view on what the opportunities are for us for learning and the students learning. Um, they work with us every day. We teach them a certain thing, now they can come out and meet with vendors and hear what's being offered out in the trade. My name is Sheila Jardim, I'm the Executive Director of the Brockton Area Workforce Investment Board and I want to welcome everyone here today to our second annual Construction Career Day. So you can work to spread out evenly so not everybody globs onto one.
Hey, Nicolene, how you doing? Hey, Jay, your shoe's untied. My what? <laughs> I couldn't. I deserve that. All right, we're going to look for the conductor, the coordinator of this fantastic event. I'm looking around. I'm looking for, to do the Nesty plunge. I'm looking for John Nesty. I'm John Nesty. I'm Employer Services Manager at the Brockton Area Workforce Investment Board, also known as BayWeb. And today we have our second annual Brockton Area Construction Career Day. So it is unlike a traditional career day where there's just simple tabletops and students are collecting pencils and pens. This is an interactive, sort of like a touch a truck event for the youth that are here. And this is a great opportunity for them to explore different career pathways that exist in the construction and engineering industries and also the jobs that might be available locally. We have a number of local companies and we have utility providers, we have some trade schools, we have some trade unions here as well. So it is not just a hiring event per se, it is a career exploration event where you do have, for example, a telecommunications company that speak with students about how telecommunication infrastructure is integrated with construction projects. Then you also have a seal coating company that are talking with students about paving, seal coating, the different needs of that type of industry within the larger scope. We have plumbers here, we have carpenters here, we have mass Department of Transportation here. There is a shortage of skilled laborers and there's just a general shortage of skilled professionals, particularly in these fields. What we've attempted to do here today was to invite as many different hands-on uh, important cogs in our local economy that revolve around construction, engineering, transportation, and the like. And we've invited invited these organizations out here today to interact with the students, to give them information about how they might pursue a career in these paths. And they're really available for all types of questions, and students have plenty, and that's for sure. One of Brockton's great resources, one of many, is BAT, Brockton Area Transit. Behind me is one of the new buses. And for the audio portion of our program, I'd like you to just stop, close your eyes, and listen to the hum of this smooth engine. Sounds like a hummingbird. We do three-year bachelor degrees instead of a four-year program. We completed in three. We also have master's degrees. Um, all of our programs are very hands-on, so you're working in your labs, and that's from day one, okay? And all of our programs are in the, either in the STEM fields or in the trades. So we have things like engineering, electrical engineering, we have things like nursing, architecture, computer software engineering, as well as trade programs like plumbing and heating, HVAC, automotive, construction management. We have up to a master's degree in construction management. That's huge. And when the, uh, I'm sorry, the magnet is spinning around wires, when the magnet's spinning, it'll actually generate electricity, and that's how they make power. <laughs> um, but, you know, I get on it when I can. If you add pressure to a fluid, it raises the boiling point. So fluid will not boil at 100 degrees no longer. It'll actually, it'll get up in a, in a running car, it'll be, uh, it'll be 120, uh, 220 degrees easy inside the car. If you take the radiator cap off, it, it lets atmospheric pressure in there and it turns into steam. So if you pull this off while it's overheating, it'll actually come out as hot steam and scold you really, really, really bad. So whenever you work on a car that's overheating, you always let it cool down and then fill it with coolant and then start it back up. And then once it's getting warm, 
listen for the radiator. The cooling fan, make sure the cooling fan comes on. If that's not coming on when the needle's getting hot, then address that problem first. The more compression you have, the more octane fuel you have to have, and the more power you can potentially make. Hi, my name is Shauna. I work here at Triumvirate Environmental. Uh, what we do is we remove hazardous waste. So today we've got a display out hoping to hire some people for an entry-level field technician role where you're going out to different client sites such as hospitals, universities, manufacturing facilities, and removing hazardous waste and hopefully we'll create a more sustainable solution with that hazardous waste. Um, today with me we have Nick who actually works out in the field in this job that we're looking to hire people for today. Yeah, uh, I've been with the company for a little over two years. Uh, I started out as a field technician, uh, learned a lot from the field. I think it's a great position to start out at. Um, most of our employees starting at that point is that's where they begin to know where they want to go within the company. Uh, like Shauna said, there's a lot of opportunity to grow with the company, different areas to you know spread out, you know management, business, uh, project management, engineering. Uh, but from my point of view, it's field technician is a great spot to start to keep moving forward. <laughs> it's a great name. I know, I know. I know. I got four start <laughs> you know, this will never break down, ever. Um, you, plastic, you just it can't happen. Um, it all depends on the pump, though. If you don't have a good pump and it doesn't work, then the basement can flood. But, however, all we're going to do is swap out the pump and everything is going to work. I'm Dave Kingsley. I'm one of the owners of Washburn Waterproofing. We've been in business now for seven years. We, um, we, Tim and I started this business because we realized the industry was underserved. Right now we average a uh, 4.9 review rating out of 5 and we really cherish our customers. Our other market is our crews. We really focus on our guys. We make sure everyone's happy. We pay them very well. Um, some of our guys have bought houses, they own new, new vehicles. And if you take care of the guys and the girls, they will guarantee the customers are happy and in turn they take care of us. Um, after rainstorms, a lot of houses in New England will flood. There'll be sometimes people can get an inch of water, some people have been in basements where they get three inches of water. And what we do is we take our 85 pound jackhammer, we cut a hole in the floor, we use a shovel right there and we dig and we put this in. When we're done, this is flush with the ground, so we're digging a pretty big hole here. And we backfill with crushed stone all around it, and the water level rises under the floor. The pump that goes into this bucket, the pump kicks on with this float, the water comes up into this pipe, and it'll go out of the house. Some people are confused. Well, why do you install the holes upside down? That's because if you turn the holes down, you're not using the full um, capacity of the pipe. Not to mention, when the water level goes in, and it goes in, it almost creates like a washing, a self-washing, and it pitches to the pump, and the smooth pipe self-cleans. So we never have to flush the system out. We're halfway through construction career day, hitting all of the vendors, all of the businesses, and we'll be back for more right after this important message regarding a neighborhood initiative in the City of Champions. The City of Brockton has tackled a new initiative, Brockton's Neighborhoods Initiative. There was a recent training held at Harbor Health. This is really exciting to, to be able to roll this out with you folks tonight. Uh, a lot of work's been done to get us up to this point. And it really started with a conversation some time ago as to what do we do as a city to kind of redefine how a lot of people perceive Brockton, particularly not just from the outside, but also from the inside, folks who live here too. And that was kind of the direction we went with changing perceptions and redefining ourselves and working with the, with the National Resource Network, which is these folks over here who have been terrific. Uh, they came in through a program uh, that we're able to qualify for to offer us technical assistance. And they've been coming in and out of the city consulting with us. And as this evolved, we've really developed it into a neighborhood initiative. I'm Hara Wright-Smith, and I'm Director of Enterprise Advisors for the National Resource Network in Washington, D.C. 
Uh, the city of Brockton called uh, the National Resource Network uh, to come into the city to assist with developing an inclusive Brockton. The mayor in particular, Mayor Carpenter, felt it was extremely important and an important time to bring neighborhoods together and to create relationships not just with neighborhoods but with neighborhoods and the city and to bridge communications in a way that would improve the city culturally, racially, ethnically um, and just make Brockton a more positive place to be and to be able to have more positive stories about what neighborhoods are doing um, and what residents particularly are doing in Brockton. So we have here today a host of volunteers across many neighborhoods who have said we're really willing to participate in this initiative around Brockton's neighborhood and to help with creating the leadership needed to make Brockton a positive place to live. So I'm really excited because a lot of people came on board from the neighborhood who represent families of various uh, diverse cultures and races um, to meet a specific mission. And the mission is how do we create place, create an identity here, and an image around Brockton that we're proud of. And we're really excited through the National Resource Network to be a part of that and to help with the leadership and training to get that done for them. To learn more, Contact the mayor's office at 508-580-7123. David, for all the pain I've caused you, you can now interview me. All Fire right. away. So, I mean, I think, to, for starters, you always get me, as far as what I'm wearing, where did you get that hat? The hat? Um, the hat? I got a Target. Oh, okay. Um, I was looking for a bigger one, but I had to settle for this. Okay, I think you can probably tuck the both of us under there. But uh, what brings you by? I'm covering another great Brockton Area Workforce Investment Board BayWib event. This is Construction Career Day, David. I'm loving it. Hopefully the audience is loving it. And I know the students that are participating today are having a great time. I bet you the audience is loving the attire you got that you dress for the occasion there, huh, buddy? <laughs> We're back, and I am in a truck owned by the Brockton Housing Authority. You're thinking, Brockton Housing Authority in a truck? What's that all about? Well, let's meet Ed, and he'll fill us in. Hi, my name's Ed McDonald. I've worked for the Housing Authority for 37 years. For the snow removal, we have to have this heavy equipment to remove a lot of the heavy snow from the, you know, we have two or three snowstorms. We also use this on for uh, salt, we have salt, uh, for, uh, we salt all the developments. Uh, we have sand, we have to fill the sand barrels. We have to use this, and uh, we use this quite a, quite a bit for plowing spots that we can't get for the uh, trucks or the pickup trucks. It's helped us out immensely on these big snowstorms that the trucks uh, can't push all the snow and we can bring this uh, front end loader in to help us with uh, remove the snow so we can get started with the trucks. My name is Nelson. And I'm Kate. We are from Riley Brothers. We are an underground utility contractor. We lay down gas and electrical pipes for companies like National Grid, Eversource, and Star. We do everything from the excavating to installing gas and electrical pipes and then covering up with asphalt pavement. We actually have our own gas school at our campus in Stoughton. Uh, we provide all the training and uh, pay for all the certifications that our employers get. Um, you know, for these students, it's a good uh, possibility to build their resume. Uh, they get the training, uh, we pay for it all, and they get the times and qualifications that they need to be on a gas job site. Some go left, some go right. Yeah, there we go, this is the right. All right, there you go, there you go. I get school done, right? You went to um, a boat school? What school you went to? Rockford High School. That won't ride right up. There's like a wire there. Up and down. Oh, the ride the wire. Communications. The red helmets are supposed to be on that other group there. I've been doing it for 21 years. I've worked in Puerto Rico. I've often been offered jobs in Amsterdam. So you can work all over the world once you know the industry and are, and are a part of it and stuff. So 
it's a good industry to be in. That thing over there, you can pick them up as far as you can, yeah. get them out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like somebody's on top of that person, and they're stuck, and you have to do some type of thing. This would be on every truck. Like, not every guy would have this, but every yeah. truck would have it. Have the certain stuff they need. Yeah. Yeah. And this is part of it, too? Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, a belt or something? That would be like if there was a rope. Instead of the wire coming down the tower, yeah. this would be like a rope grab. Okay. So you you know you're always tied off. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. It is amazing that one person could potentially this could be one person's kit. And if you look at all of this equipment, it can I'm sure it can get heavy. It's a risky, a little bit of a risky job, but uh, it pays well. And there is help wanted for experienced technicians. And uh, I think a lot of the students are picking up on that. How do I get involved? How do I get active? How do I get certified? What do I need to do to take those steps in order to become certified and work for a company like Timberline? Fascinating, interesting stuff. We could do you need to pass a drug test? You need to pass a background check to make sure you don't have any felonies? I'm a good girl. And you get your license so you can drive to work? Other than that, you're good to go. We'll train you. We'll give you the proper equipment. Well, we'll give you our hard hat. We'll give you um, safety vests. We'll give you safety pants. We'll give you everything that you're going to need to succeed. So it's important for us that not only you come to work for us, but you remain safe also. Well, the biggest thing about when you get into a CDL truck is learning to drive it and learning your surroundings and, and being comfortable with the weight, number one. These trucks do not stop on a dime like a car. Not even close. So once you get comfortable with it, it's like, honestly, I don't want to say it's like driving a car, but when you've got 26 years of doing it, it's like second nature to me. It's like getting in your car. I'm here with Peter Zimbor from the mayor's office. Pete, uh, what are you doing here today? I'm just checking on the festivities as you are, Jay. Are you looking for, I'm looking for another job, but I don't want to tell anybody. <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately, we've got that on recording and on television, so that might not be the best bet for you. Maybe uh, you're right. <laughs> God. In order to get like licensed, you gotta, you gotta continue with school, but we do that, and it's very reasonable. I'm Rhonda German, and I'm the admissions advisor at Southeastern Technical Institute, and we're located in Easton. We are part of the Southeastern Regional School District and often are taken for the high school, but we are the post-secondary school. You must have a high school diploma in order to enter um, and to be admitted at Southeastern. We have eight programs. Our day programs in the healthcare industry are medical assisting, dental assisting, and practical nurse. In the evening, we have programs culinary arts, cosmetology, and then in the construction field, we have entry-level plumbing, entry-level electricity, and heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration. All of our programs offer a certification or a license, and our staff at STI prepare you to do that in order to get your license and then you're able to work in the field. My name is Jerry Ferreira, I'm with the Old Pine Planning Council. Kyle Mowat with the Old Colony Planning Council. So what's happening today, Jimmy? What are you doing here? Right, so uh, again, we're with Old Colony Planning Council, your regional planning agency, and today on display we have our, uh, our traffic counting devices. Uh, I'll let uh, Kyle explain what these devices are, and then I'll get into the study portion. So this is our turning movement box. We use this at intersections to record cars. You simply press the button if they're going straight. If they're going left or right, and it also records uh, pedestrians, and we record bikes with it as well. And this is our automatic traffic recorder box, and this records cars in between intersections, and we use the tubes, and they set up with the box, and a car runs over the tubes, sends an air pulse to the box, and it records speed, volume, and it differentiates between truck or a car. 
This is the older model, which has a solar panel. The newer models are uh, battery powered. Uh, but after we collect all the data and the information, we go ahead and uh, conduct a report. And uh, what you have in front of you is the average annual daily traffic. Uh, the thicker blue lines show uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, greater than 50,000 vehicles per day. So usually that'll be on the highways. Uh, Old County Planning Council usually works with the uh, inner uh, community routes. So uh, the uh, other routes such as 27, which cuts through not just Brockton, but uh, Pleasant Street uh, and also in uh, Stoughton also, and through various communities, we'll focus on that. Uh, we'll give the uh, report off to the community and they will be able to uh, uh, implement the uh, suggestions and recommendations that we have provided. We're in the National Lumber Truck. It's, it's, a, it's a big truck, 13 speeds. Do you believe that? Um, and they have lifts that go up uh, 70, even upwards of 90 feet. It's incredible. And uh, let's meet somebody from National Lumber right now. I'm Maria Fratiello. I'm the Director of Human Resources at National Lumber. We distribute a lot of uh, loose lumber, plywood, two by fours, that sort of stuff. But what a lot of people don't know is we actually do a lot of prefab in-house, a lot of design work, and we also do um, project management. We're out building um, assisted livings, condominiums, and hotels. Well, there you have it, Brockton. Baywib Construction Career Day, year two in the books. It was quite an event. We'd like to thank all the Baywib staff, Executive Director Sheila Sullivan Jardim. Assistant Director Jason Hunter, the coordinator, the puppet master of all this, John Nesty. We also had Nicolene Batista, David Vincent, and a host of others that joined us for the ride. We'd also like to thank all of the businesses that took the time to show us a little bit about what they do and what they offer. And we hope you, the viewing audience, had some fun and learned some things. To learn more about us, Brockton Community Access, please visit our website at bcatv.org. You can also check out our YouTube page, youtube.com backslash the Brockton channels, all one word. For executive producer Mark Lindy and producer Aaron Tebow, I'm Jay Miller, and we will see you at the construction site. Doesn't fit. That's horrible. Can we start again? No, that, that's, no rain. No rain. That's all. Yeah, just no rain. But other than that, the sun's shining. I'm trying to keep the uh, sun off my face. Get buddy. Yeah, yeah. I tend to overdress or underdress. It depends on the event. That was a really good. All one. right. Okay.